Hey guys, Chelsea here, and in this video we're going to talk about isotopes. So, the basic idea of isotopes is same number of protons, different number of neutrons. The way we identify our elements, if you've ever looked at a periodic table of elements or taken a chemistry class, we identify them based on the number of protons that they have. So if you change the number of protons, you're getting an entirely different element. It is no longer the same thing. If it has one proton, that's a hydrogen. If it has 20 protons, that's not hydrogen anymore, right? So it has to have the same number of protons, but if you throw in a different number of neutrons, then you're getting what we call an isotope, all right? Why does that matter? Well, it's going to change the mass. It's going to give it some different properties, but how do we use these, yeah? So. If you've ever known anybody who had cancer radiation, we use for that a radioactive isotope called cobalt-60. All right, so radiation, radioactive, we've got these ideas, we understand these things. Makes isotope maybe a slightly less scary word, all right? Radiocarbon dating, you guys have probably heard of carbon dating, right? How does this one work? Well, carbon-14, so usually you have, um, you know, carbon has six protons, so it would usually have six neutrons. In this case, it's going to have extra neutrons. And carbon-14 is radioactive, so it will decay. It also decays at a very predictable rate. Okay, so we did a bunch of studies, we figured out the rate at which it decays, we figured out its half-life, that's what we call it. Um, if Again, if you've studied chemistry, you know what that's all about. But the idea is just, you know, how fast is it going to decay? And we can use that information, right? We can look at how much carbon-14 is left and things like that, and we can see how old this particular thing was, right? This was, you know, 10,000 years old, and this thing died, you know, 8,622 years ago or whatever. And that, we can do that, and that's, that's pretty cool, yeah? Now let's get into this passage. In this passage, we're talking about isotopic composition. Okay, so before we talked about elemental composition, and we had these percentages, right, of different elements. Now in this case, we're going to look at isotopic composition, which means, so in this case over here, I've written out, let's say you have lead 204, and then you have some lead 206, that's a different isotope of lead. And then you have some lead 207 and some lead 208. All of these are different isotopes of the same element. Okay, so isotopic composition, again, we're going to have these percentages, and it breaks down, and that's wonderful. And remember our map, right? So we have this pot from Turkey. We dug it up out of the ground from Turkey. It was made during the Bronze Age. Okay, so maybe we did our, our carbon dating over here. We used our carbon dating to figure out when it's from. But now we want to figure out where it's from. And this time we don't want the lead to decay. So these are all stable isotopes of lead. Stable means they don't decay. All right. And that's good because we want all of these percentages to stay exactly the same so that wherever it got dug up out of the dirt, right, they got, had that dirt and they dug up that rock and they used that rock, they melted it down and they did the whole the hammering and the banging and the shaping and all that stuff, right? So we looked at that video and the smelting and all that. And they did all that stuff and then they made a pot and they shipped it off to Turkey or, well, you know, maybe carried it on some donkeys. Okay, so it goes to Turkey, right? And it's the same exact lead than there as it was in China. Okay, so China b digs up this lead and it has this composition and then we want it to have the exact same composition when it gets over to Turkey. And then years and years later, okay, so maybe a mudslide comes and it, you know, buries this pot. Years and years later, we dig it up in the present day. And again, still, years later, we want it to have the exact same composition. We don't want it to have changed, because if it changes, then we don't know where it came from. Remember, we talked about that in our last video. If it changes in any way, if the smelting or the flux or all that stuff changes the elemental composition, then elemental comp composition is no good. But in this case, because we're doing isotopes, here's the cool thing. Let's say you start out and, you know, you dig this rock up out of the ground in China, and 30% of that rock is lead, you know, and the other, you know, 70% or whatever is copper. Okay. So 30% of it is lead, but then you do the whole smelting and the roasting and all that stuff, and you melt it down and you make a pot, and through that process, you lose some of the lead. So now you only have 22% is lead. Well, that's bad for elemental composition because then we don't know, you know, that's not going to match, that pot is not going to match the dirt in China, the rock in China, the ore. 
in China, right? So then we can't tell. But if no matter how much lead there is, even if there's only, you know, 2% of it is lead that's left, right? So very, very little lead. If that lead that is left still has exactly this, it has exactly 35.46% of it is this lead 204, 22.82% is this lead 206, lead 207, 208, and it has this exact same element, uh, sorry, isotopic composition, no matter how much of the lead is left. That's great, because that means that we can tell that it definitely came from China. We can dig up that ore from the dirt, and we can dig up this pot over here in Turkey, and we can look at those two things, and they're going to look the same. Yeah, and that's good. So, if you don't understand any part of this, talk to your instructor now. This is one of those moments where we really can teach you and talk to you and explain stuff because we're, we're trying to teach you about the world, right? This isn't a thing to struggle through. It's not a thing to, you know, not know and then guess at. We're just going to try to tell you some information. And a lot of our tutors love chemistry. So talk to them. They're happy to share their information with you. Uh, and then not armed with this knowledge, let's attack the next questions.